Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O oh God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O oh God, our mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, who is over the household. I will thrust you from your office, and you will be cast down from your station. In that day, I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with your robe, and I will bind your belt on him, and will commit your authority to his hand. And he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And I will place on his shoulder the key of the house of David. He shall open, and none shall shut. And he shall shut, and none shall open. And I will fasten him like a pig in a sure place, and he will become a throne of honor to his father's house. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. O Lord, your merciful love is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. O, o Lord, Lord, your, your merciful, merciful love is, is eternal. eternal. Discard, Discard not the work, the work of, your of your hands. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I praise you. I bow down toward your holy temple. O, o Lord, Lord, your, your merciful, merciful love, love is eternal. eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. I give thanks to your name for your merciful love and your faithfulness. You have exalted your name and your promise over all. On the day I call, you answered me. You increased the strength of my soul. O oh Lord, Lord, your, your merciful, merciful love is eternal. eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. The Lord is high, yet he looks on the lowly, and the haughty he knows from afar. O Lord, the, your merciful love is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. O Lord, your merciful love is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. O oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and how unscrutable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counsellor, or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? 
for from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory for ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Yona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Who do you say that I am? The question Jesus addresses to his disciples in the reading today is one of the central questions in the gospel and in our own lives. The question implies a relationship between the one asking and the one called to respond. The response Jesus waits for can only be given if the one responding has answered a call that has drawn him or her to leave everything and to follow Jesus. The only one who can respond is a disciple, one who sits at Jesus' feet, listening carefully to his teaching, one who walks behind Jesus, observing his every action. The one who responds is the one who will be given the authority to speak as Jesus has spoken, to do as Jesus has done. Being able to respond is more than formulating the right words. It is part and parcel of the yes, of the one willing to leave everything and follow Jesus. The response will not be simply words, illustrious adjectives and honorific titles, but an act of proclamation that implies a choice, a discernment, a readiness to get up and go, being led by a relationship that defines one's entire life. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In today's gospel, Peter reaches a peak in his life as disciple. Indeed, he has already left everything, his fishing nets, his home, his life to follow Jesus. However, this proclamation of who Jesus is defines him, Peter, in a new light. You are the Christ. You are the anointed, the one, the one I and all of us have been waiting for. But beyond all this, My proclamation of you as Christ makes me a Christian. You are not simply a teacher, a good man, an enlightened master. You are the Christ. My proclamation of that makes me a Christian, 
which means one reformed in Christ's image and likeness. Indeed, my proclamation of Jesus as the Christ implies my own recreation of one bearing his likeness. You are the Son of God, the one who has come to renew the image and likeness of God in me, so that I too can be a son or a daughter of God. God does not desire that Jesus be the only begotten Son, but rather the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. My proclamation is the beginning of my way to conform to the pattern God has set. I am called to represent Christ in the world. In Christ's absence, I must make him present. Peter not only proclaims Jesus the Christ and Son of God, but insists on the identity of God as a living God. Our God is a God of life and not of death. Despite our repeated falling away, our choice of darkness, sin, and death, God remains faithful to the promise of life, a God of life and not of death, the living God. Jesus will be delivered up to death by our sinful nature. Peter will deny and abandon him, contributing a terrifying part to the tragedy. But God, the living God, never allows death to be the last act. Following Jesus, proclaiming him as Christ and Son of God, means proclaiming the gospel of life. At the very center of the gospel of Jesus is the resurrection, the victory over darkness, sin, and death. The gospel is the proclamation of the life, of resurrection. If we are Christian, if we proclaim Jesus as Christ and Son of God, it is because we believe that life has vanquished death. We believe that because we know that God is faithful. Life is victorious because Christ has already been raised from the dead. This is why we are here. This is what we affirm during the Eucharist. This is what we go out to proclaim at the end of the celebration. We have come in from a world too often burdened by darkness, sin, and death to gather around the Eucharistic table. Here we are renewed in our faith in the living God and God's Son, the Christ, and our commitment to proclaim him. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father, Jesus responds to Peter's proclamation with these words. We do not know who Jesus is. We cannot proclaim his identity. We cannot thus lay our life on the line without receiving faith as a gift from our Father in heaven. It is this gift of the Spirit that must animate our being. It is the joy of knowing that despite all worldly evidence to the contrary, death has indeed been vanquished by a God who is known fully to us in Jesus. Our proclamation is uniquely authentic in the radiant joy of the witness to the resurrection The authenticity of our faith is not in the wisdom or riches of the church, not in her beauty or even in her service, but in her joy and the hope it engenders. This joy is the basis of her authority, the authority given to Peter. It is the authority based upon the proclamation of life as a manifestation of God's love for all of us. Let's pray together now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you are always calling us to new life. Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered, to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week. <laughs>